Back in the out of Sports Beat Radio coming to you here on this Friday. Of course, we're at BB's Market where you can stop in and uh, check out the show live. Also, uh, obviously, one of our sponsors pick up some great meats. I'm sitting there looking at some of the turkeys uh, that they're getting ready to go back and uh, do some great stuff with. Speaking of turkeys, uh, Alec Glassley. No, just kidding. Uh, I used that on uh, Bob Kravitz the other day. It was it was hump day. And I said, speak of humps. <laughs> Welcome in, Alec Lasley from the Hoosier.com. Uh, Alec, how are you doing, brother? Good. How are you doing? I uh, cannot complain. It's game day. Indiana travels to Cincinnati today to take on Xavier. We've got UCLA and Illinois. Last night, we saw Michigan get absolutely run out of the gym by Bobby Hurley. Uh, so, and Michigan State beats Kentucky. So we've got a lot to, a lot to unpack here in the Big Ten this week. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, it, you know, we finally last week was a bit of a lull uh, to kind of get the season started. And, and now you're getting into some of these huge non-conference matchups. Obviously, Indiana, their first their first real test this season. But, but you're looking around the Big Ten, and I think there's still, you know, we came into the season with a lot of question marks surrounding a lot of the teams so far. Um, I think Michigan State's proven to be a little bit tougher and better than than maybe some people expected. Uh, Michigan, I think a lot of people were were expecting a little bit more out of the gate than what they've shown. Obviously, struggled against Eastern Michigan last week as well, um, and almost lost that one. So, still a lot to work with, especially with their guard play. I don't think it's as good as uh, people were were expecting or kind of anticipating uh, heading into the season. Um, so they, they have a lot of issues to kind of work around, not a lot of wing scoring, which they've typically had a good amount of. Uh, so if Hunter Dickinson's not on, um, or at least struggling a little bit, uh, they're, they're going to struggle to find some points, especially if Jet Howard isn't hitting from the outside. Um, those are their two main scoring options, and the, they're kind of lacking that consistent third score, at least for the moment. We'll see, obviously, how that develops as the season moves on, only you know three, four games into the season. But uh, all in all, uh, I think the, the Big Ten's still in a good place. I think Iowa, uh, their matchup against Seton Hall earlier this week uh, as part of the Gavit games, I think they showed that they're probably going to be a little bit better than people thought. Uh, I think Chris Murray's obviously ready to kind of step into that role that, that his brother had last year, uh, being Keegan Murray obviously off to the NBA now. Um, but all in all, I think the, the Big Ten's still going to be one of the best conferences in the league or in the, uh, in the country, but uh, still a lot of questions, I think, outside of the, the top maybe three teams of kind of where teams match up and, and finish uh, as the year goes on here. Yeah, I had Stephen Bardo on yesterday, and, of course, you know, he had uh, his, his Big Ten top freshman list that went out, which uh, drew a lot of ire from Indiana fans. But uh, after having him on the show yesterday, he explained that, that well, that was basically a screw-up between him and his producer – as far as getting the right information of how it was going to be called, but because he has nothing but respect for uh, Jalen Hutchfino and Malik Renu, uh, he talked about that yesterday. They are not only two of the best freshmen, they're just two of the best players. Malik Renu could start on any Big Ten team in this league, as could Jalen Hutchfino. Um, so Indiana has a, a, a hand up there. And, and Michigan's, last night watching Michigan, their starters, they just didn't – it didn't look cohesive. I don't know what it was, but they, they just weren't in rhythm. Um, I, what did it uh, – I, I didn't see uh, uh, the big boy do much. I don't know what his stats were. I haven't checked them, but he – I tried to watch as much of it as I could, and I didn't see him have much of an impact, which was a little shocking. Yeah, he finished with 14 and 5, but um... – I mean, all in all, what wasn't a great shooting performance uh, from him. Again, the, the the major issue with with Michigan is just the the lack of guard play. Uh, they they bring in uh, Jalen Llewellyn, uh transfer um, and just hasn't been able to fit through the the first couple of games so far. Really kind of struggled to get his shot. Uh, I think he's only shooting about 30, 35 percent from the field. Uh, obviously, as a point guard, can't really be doing that. He he's not a true point guard. Uh, to begin with, more of a scoring point guard. And obviously, if, if you bring in a scoring point guard uh, as a senior to, to kind of take over the, the reins from what you've had the past couple of years where they've had some success with those those transfer point guards and he's not shooting the ball, obviously you're, you're going to struggle 
Um, they have some young pieces who just haven't been able to to kind of find their role yet. Again, only four games in, right? Well, we'll see what happens moving forward. But outside of Hunter Dickinson and, and Jet Howard, they just don't have a lot of uh, really com- – they, they have a lot of complementary pieces, but they don't have that third score that they really need, especially in the backcourt, uh, to be a consistent piece and, and effectively score the ball. And, and if you don't have that, um, they're, they're going to double Hunter Dickinson a lot more. And, you know, he, he – he hasn't proven to be a fantastic passer out of double teams. Um, but again, if you don't have shooters around, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, wh- which way that ball that ball goes. So Michigan has some uh, some, uh, some some issues that they need to work through right now. Um, and I think you'll you'll end up seeing them again in the middle of the pack, if not at the closer to the top. Uh, once the Big Ten's all all said and done, but I, I don't think they're gonna uh, be within that top three uh, just due to their, their point guard play and their, their inconsistencies throughout the first couple of weeks here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll get a good look at Illinois as they take on uh, UCLA. That is going to be a, a battle. Is that being played somewhere uh, neutral, I'm assuming? I, I... Yeah, that's in, that's in Vegas. It's part of a doubleheader, you know, one of these preseason tournaments with uh, Baylor and Virginia. Um, so the the winner, obviously, of those two will face each other this weekend. Um, but yeah, that that should be. Uh, you know, I think obviously Illinois coming in. I think it, it was kind of one A one B with what a lot of people thought with Indiana and Illinois. Illinois brought in a lot of new pieces, whether they be freshmen who are playing big roles or transfers. Um, and I, I think you're seeing uh, Terrence Shane really, really step up, having a fantastic couple couple games to start the year. Um, the Texas Tech transfer there, but I, I think he's. He's kind of molded himself into that, you know, player of the year contention with Trey Jackson Davis. Um, I think you're going to see him continue this play um, that, that he's had so far. A couple freshmen that, that have really stepped up, I think, to start the year that maybe a lot of people weren't expecting to, to have the impact that they're having right away. Um, and, you know, still some pieces that they're trying to trying to figure out. Sky Clark's been a little bit inconsistent to start the year. They're, they're five-star point guard. They're teammates with uh, Jalen Huchifino and Malik Renu. Um, last year, so you know they they have some some really good guard talent, but some really young guard talent, uh, and I think that's going to be the the major question mark for them, uh, just like it is Michigan moving forward to to see how uh, how consistent those freshman guards can be, uh, especially when you don't have a lot of veterans uh, that you did have in the past, especially in the backcourt for Illinois. Yeah, and then uh, Indiana, of course has their game tonight at six versus uh, Xavier. We'll talk. Uh, that's – I haven't seen Xavier a lot. I They were on TV the other night. I know they played three games. They haven't really been uh, hugely impressive, but it doesn't matter right now. It's early in the season. They've got some, some pieces that uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that – Indiana attacks that. Jack Nunji, uh, a big – 6, 10, 11, 12, uh, 7 foot, whatever he really is. Um, he's going to be on the perimeter a lot. I don't think he likes to spend a lot of time in the paint, but that's fine if Race, Jack, Race Thompson uh, had, draws that assignment. But I, I don't think that they really have anyone that, that can keep up with Trace Jackson Davis at that time. And then then you're going to bring in Malik Renew. So uh, Indiana just has this one, two, three punch, and we haven't even talked about the guards. Um, you talked about Michigan's lack of guard play, uh, especially at the point. Indiana truly has three guys they can run at the point and do run at the point. A few teams have that. Mike Woodson has a lot of weapons at his disposal this year. And, you know, they talked, everyone, everyone thought Indiana was deep last year, and they were not at all. They are truly a deep team this year. And, I, that's going to serve them very well, and I think this is a game that uh, we're going to start. Yeah, absolutely. I think the you know we we talked to Mike Woodson yesterday, um, and you know one of the questions that, that I asked him was uh, about the 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 backcourt that Indiana has, right, and the the talent that they have defensively, which they didn't have last year. Uh, now multiple guys that they can kind of throw out on the perimeter on the wing. Um, to defend because that was one issue that Indiana had most of last year was being able to really have some sort of lockdown wing defense. They they were helped a lot by uh, the interior, especially Trace Jackson Davis averaging almost two and a half blocks a game. 
right? So that that kind of masked a lot of the deficiencies that they had out on the perimeter. Got a lot better towards the end of the season, especially with Miller Cop coming on late. Uh, but when you have Xavier Johnson and, and Jalen Hutchifino as those two backcourt guards, both with good size, good uh, physical type of play to, to be in the Big Ten, uh, that, that's one thing that you know he even said yesterday well, was a huge plus that they didn't have last year. Obviously, Xavier Johnson was a, a very, very good defender last year, but now you have two guard defenders, and that, that's going to be a key going up against Xavier, who have three, four, five different perimeter scorers who can light it up not only from deep but are – bigger athletic longer guards that indiana has struggled with um with some sort of this roster in the past and when you when you have six four six five point guards and, and shooting guards and, and six 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 seven wings which xavier has that's going to be that's going to pose a problem if indiana is not ready to go defensively on the perimeter uh because of the rate that, that xavier does shoot the ball they're one of the most effective shooting teams in the country uh, they don't get a lot of shots off because uh, they still turned it over about one every five possessions. Uh, but overall, they're they're shooting almost sixty percent from the field to start the to start the season here. They don't take a lot of threes, uh, but they are shooting almost fifty percent from three on about uh, seven makes a game. So when when you put those two things together, you're going to need to stop obviously the dribble drive, and that that obviously starts with the defensive uh, unit with Indiana in that backcourt. So I think that's going to be a huge key. And we'll see if they're up for the test. Um, haven't been able to, to face, you know, an athletic, long, and, and tall backcourt so far this season. So that's going to be the key, in, in my opinion, uh, even though a lot of people are obviously going to look at the, the front court matchup there, which, which still is going to be a, a good matchup in itself. Yeah, it's, uh, this is also going – Indiana, we've seen a lot that, uh, that Indiana hasn't won a road game, true road game since this and that. that. And, I mean, they don't play a lot of true road games. Uh, for one thing, you don't put yourself in that position very often. You try not to. Everybody gets on Calipari about that, but every everyone tries to do that. So part of that is not having played. The only road games they're playing these days are uh, you know, Kansas is an anomaly because that was just added. You've had the Gavit games and the ACC Big Ten Challenge. They had Syracuse in this, so they don't have a lot. Should have won that game to Syracuse, uh, ironically. But this spans two previous coaches, uh, this losing streak on the road for non-con games. That can't be overlooked, even though it has to do with different programs, different guys. Uh, it's something to keep in mind. You know, they go on the road. They went on the road to Syracuse last year, could not get it done over a team that they were obviously much better than. So this is also the first true test, uh, road test for Malik Renew and Jalen Shafino. Those guys have not been on the road in college, uh, as well as C.J. Gunn, if those guys see see action. But those two. So well, I don't think it's going to affect – I don't think anything is going to affect Malik Renew. He is – he's just locked in. I don't know if it's locked in or he just – I was talking – I forget who was on the show what day it was, but – he just plays like he's playing against uh, some 11th graders out there, man. Like, he's just going to do his deal no matter what. doesn't matter who comes in, who they're playing against, where they are. He just seems to get unaffected. And I think Jalen Hutchfino is going to be the same way because of the environment that they came from, from Montverde. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they they basically played in, in big-time college atmospheres already um, in high school and obviously even dating back to uh, playing in AAU. Uh, just the, the teams that both of them were on playing in those type of environments. Obviously, much different environment going on the road in college on a Friday night, right? Xavier has a lot of momentum here with Sean Miller uh, being back for the second time, you know, in, in his co coaching career. Um, a lot of people expecting a lot out of this team in general. I think a lot of people were surprised, too, that they weren't ranked in the top 25 to begin the season uh, right outside now. But, uh, you know, I, I think – all in all, the freshmen are going to struggle a little bit, I think, right when they get in the game, just because, again, this is their first big time, you know, college game. No, no matter what you say about the, the first couple games to start, obviously, at Assembly Hall, uh, you have your, you know, your first couple game jitters. But, but going on the road uh, to a Big East team, to a team that has a lot of aspirations to, to not only make the NCAA tournament, to, but to win a game uh, that is in Xavier. And Sean Miller, 
no matter what you want to say with with obviously the the FBI and, and the NCAA investigations uh, and everything that came down at uh, at Arizona, the guy can coach. The the guy ha- has a, a very very good and appealing scheme. And when you have shooters on the floor and when you play the defense that he likes to play, you know that's that's a tough test. No matter who's coming in, no matter if you're a veteran or uh, a freshman here, but. Uh, you know, Mike Woodson said it yesterday, right? No matter where you're going on the road, it's tough to win on the road. So you got to lean on the veterans. And Indiana has that. And Sean Miller even talked about that, uh, the the experience that this team has um, coming in for, for Indiana. And that's what you're going to have to see. And I think Xavier Johnson is going to have to play uh, a very good game from start to finish uh, to take a little bit of that pressure off of a guy like Jalen Huchifino and even some of those other uh, ball handlers it can't get in foul trouble early because because if he does, that's going to put a lot of stress not only on Mike Woodson but the rest of these players and um, the the free flow of this offense so far to begin the season. That's that's going to be taken away immediately with the defensive pressure that Xavier's going to bring and the length that they have. So you need a veteran point guard out there to at least get this offense in some sort of a rhythm, or else it could uh, it could be a tough first half um, if Indiana is not ready to come out of the gate strong. Yeah, um, not only that, X uh, has got to stay out of foul trouble, but they also have to keep hitting their free throws, which means staying locked in. Because if, if you get into a game that starts to get close, that's how games get away from people. Uh, and I I asked Trey Galloway about that yesterday because they said that that has really been a focus and we've seen it be a lot better. But that's something they need to sustain because that's part of how Michigan State beat Kentucky the other night. They hit 12 out of 13 free throws in the overtime periods. They hit 23 of 27 overall. You think that don't win you games? You're wrong, especially in these big games, uh, especially when you go on the road. You have to do the little things, not turn the ball over and hit free throws. 